Okay, so like uh, everyone remembers the Furby craze, right? Like going to the mall and seeing these things everywhere. Yeah. It was like utter pandemonium, parents like fighting over them, kids freaking out. And the prices, I mean, forget about it. People were paying insane amounts of money for these things. Hundreds, even thousands of dollars for a little furry toy. Wow, that's wild. It really was. And, you know, you guys are clearly as fascinated by this as I am because you sent in a ton of stuff on Furby's articles, Wikipedia deep dives, even some, like, really technical stuff. So we're going to get into all of it. That'll be fun. Yeah, like, why this wasn't just some passing fad. This was, like, a full-blown cultural phenomenon. Yeah, I think what's interesting is how the whole Furby thing kind of mirrored what was going on back then. Yeah. Like, it was the late 90s. Yeah. The dot-com boom was in full swing. Everyone thought the internet was going to change everything. Oh, totally. Tech was king. And then you have this, like, owl-like toy that could learn. It was like the future had arrived, mm -hmm. but in this cute, fluffy package. It really was like a sign of the times. I mean, Y2K was happening, too. Everyone was freaking out about computers crashing, the world ending. Like this big uncertainty about the future. And Furbies, with their weird language and even weirder tech, they kind of tapped into that, don't you think? And you can't forget about Tamagotchis. Remember those? Everyone and their grandma had one. Oh, yeah. Feeding their little digital pets. It was like the precursor to Furbies in a way. Yeah. Like suddenly everyone wanted to take care of these virtual creatures. And Furbies took it a step further, brought that digital connection into the real world. Yeah, like they were the missing link between Tamagotchis and real pets. But seriously, the scale of the Furby craze still blows my mind. Like people were going crazy, department store stampedes, people camping out overnight. It's true. It reminds me of trying to get like concert tickets to a sold out show. You're telling me that mental floss article we got. Yeah. Uh, it talks about how people were paying like 300 bucks on the resale market. What? Yeah. For a toy that originally cost like 35. That's insane. It shows the power of marketing for sure. Mm. But also like this human need for connection. For something well, new, for something that feels almost alive, you know? You know what's crazy? Even politicians were talking about Furbies. I swear, I remember something about them coming up during the Bill Clinton impeachment hearings. Yeah, you're right. It was Congresswoman Mary Bono. Yeah, she yeah. was saying how even with the economy doing well, some people were still struggling to afford a Furby. No way. Yeah, it just shows how huge this whole thing was. Like, everyone wanted in. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. Okay, but let's get into the nitty gritty here. Beyond the hype, the Mental Floss and Bustle articles both talk about how surprisingly advanced the original Furby was. We're not talking about some basic talking toy here. Oh, no, not at all. This is next level stuff. Right, this was 1998. Bluetooth was barely a thing. Okay. And here's Tiger Electronics stuffing cutting edge robotics into this cute furry toy. Light sensors, touch sensors, even infrared communication so they could talk to each other. Hold on. They could actually network. Back in 1998, that's insane. I was still on dial-up back then. This little furball was more advanced than my computer. Yeah, they were ahead of their time. And what about that whole language thing? Everyone remembers the gibberish, but didn't they eventually learn English? Yeah, they started with furbish, which <laughs> always sounded kind of vaguely Eastern European to me. I know, right? But get this. They were designed to slowly start using... English words and phrases based on how you interacted with them. Oh, really? Like a real pet learning your name. That's incredible. And people thought they were actually learning. Well, it's a clever trick. The IE Spectrum article goes into the technical details. Mm -hmm. No real AI there. It was all cleverly pre-programmed. But at the time, it felt real. It's like they were playing on our desire to believe in something more, something magical. Which, looking back, might have been a little ahead of its time, but that whole thing about them learning, like, is it really learning or is it just clever programming? It gets kind of creepy when you think about it too much. Yeah, it's like Furby's tapped into this primal fear of the unknown. Like, it's not just a toy anymore. It's this weird thing blurring the lines between object and living creature. Right. Okay, so speaking of creepy, let's talk about some of the myths and rumors surrounding these things. The Mental Floss article goes deep on this stuff. Like, did people really believe Furbies were teaching their kids to swear? It sounds ridiculous now, but think about it. You're a parent in the late 90s. You hear this thing talking gibberish, and sometimes it kind of sounds like a bad word. I guess. Plus, no one really knew what was going on inside these things technologically, so it's easy to see how those fears popped up. Fear of the unknown, right? But come on, the FAA thought Furbies were going to mess with airplanes. Seriously. Yeah, well, technology was changing so fast back then. People were getting used to cell phones and laptops, and then boom! This furry toy shows up with sensors that can communicate. It's like a Black Mirror episode. Right. 
Like we're living in a sci-fi movie. So it wasn't really that Furbies were dangerous. It was more that people were afraid of what they didn't understand. Exactly. And then you have the NSA banning Furbies from their offices. And it's like, hmm. okay, this is a whole other level of concern. Wait, seriously? They banned Furbies from the NSA. What did they think was going to happen? They were going to steal top secret information in Furbish. Well, the fear was that they were secretly recording conversations and sending them to, well, someone. They never proved it, but again, the tech was such a mystery. It's easy to see how that fear took hold. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny now looking back, but imagine being the people at Tiger Electronics trying to explain all this. Like, oh, Mr. President, your Furby isn't spying on you. Right. But it shows how we react to technology. When we don't get it, we freak out. Uh. We let our fears run wild. For sure. Speaking of freaking out, did you hear the one about Furbies being made of real fur? Like there were some Frankenstein creatures stitched together? Oh yeah, all that stuff about the fake Humane Society press releases and the DNA tests. It was crazy. It's wild. And the best part, Tiger Electronics just went with it. Remember their response? Yep, a lot of acrylics were harmed in the making of this product. They totally leaned into the absurdity of it all. I know. But it also brings up those real concerns about where our stuff comes from and what we're buying into. So you've got cutting edge tech, cold war, paranoia, ethical dilemmas, all rolled into this cute, furry toy. No wonder they became such a phenomenon. They were like a mirror reflecting all our hopes and anxieties about the future. Yeah, and that impact is still felt today. That independent article you shared talked about how Furbies are still popping up everywhere. From The Simpsons, those big budget movies. Right, like that Furby army in the Mitchells versus the Machines. That was awesome. Yeah. So good. They really captured that creepy cute thing that makes Furby so memorable. But it goes beyond pop culture too, right? Totally. That article made a good point. Furbies were like the pioneers of those interactive toys we see now. Think about it. Hatchimals, Fingerlings. Those robot dogs, they all owe something to the Furby. That's so true. Furbies were like the iPhone of toys. They changed the whole game. Suddenly, kids weren't just playing with toys. They were interacting with them, forming bonds. Yeah, like a relationship. Which is kind of amazing when you really think about it. For sure. It's that human need for connection, mm. even if it's with a synthetic creature speaking gibberish. And in our digital world, that need has only gotten stronger. Yeah, and that article said it perfectly, remember. It said it became human in a way that other products hadn't. Yeah, I remember that line. That's exactly it. That's what's so fascinating about Furbies, this weird mix of technology and, like, what are they thinking? Totally. They weren't just some fad. They were, like, this reflection of where we were at. Like, all our anxieties about tech, our need for connection, even those big ethical questions about the things we create. Right, like, who knew this little furry toy could make us think so much? It's true. It's like looking in a funhouse mirror, but instead of seeing ourselves all distorted, we get Furbies. Yeah. So what do you think out there listening? Yeah, good question. Were Furbies just a silly fad? A technological marvel? Or were they like a sneak peek into a future where even our toys have a mind of their own? It's kind of scary to think about, mm -hmm. especially now with how fast technology is moving. For real. It's getting harder to tell the difference between a toy and like a real tool. <laughs> You know, yeah. between something artificial and something intelligent. What used to be sci-fi is just real life now. And it all started with this fuzzy owl that spoke gibberish. Who would have thought? It's pretty amazing. Well, except maybe the NSA. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> or are we? We'll let you be the judge. Good one. But seriously, from those crazy department stores to the whole NSA thing, we went deep on the world of Furbies and what they say about us. It's been fun. So remember, every trend, every weird thing that captures the world has more to it than meets the eye. Definitely. Keep asking those questions. Keep digging deeper. And most importantly, keep an eye on your Furbies. Yes, you never yes. know what they're thinking. Until next time, everyone, happy diving. <laughs>